Hi, my name is Pierre and this is Simple Home Brew. Welcome. I would like to thank you all for being part of this journey and getting me to a thousand subscribers. Good on you guys. Today I'd like to share just some of the things I've learnt during this short time brewing and I would like to share it with you. So guys, I've been looking at my analytics for my YouTube channel and I found that 30% of my views on my channel are subscribers. 70% haven't subscribed at all. Wow. So I'm going to push a bit harder to get people to subscribe. So I'm going to say to you guys who aren't subscribed, subscribe. You're going to miss out on my videos if you don't. Anyway, we'll get on with it. So there are six items I would like to share with you that I think could be beneficial to any of you out there who are just beginning to brew. Um, I will start off with sanitizer. Sanitizer, and I'll show you a video of the sanitizer and what I've got. Uh, sanitizer is massively important. Everything must be cleaned and especially sanitized. Once you've sanitized everything, you can move on to your next part. Uh, it's, it's simple, very easy to do. Another really good bit of advice I will love to give to you if you're planning on doing all grain brewing, do yourself a favour. Do it outside. Uh, it, as much as it smells good to you, your family won't appreciate you doing it in the kitchen. That's why I built this shed. I built this shed so that I can brew outside and away from my house because unfortunately sometimes some of the hops you put into your brew while brewing can tend to stink, especially all grain brewing. So that is one big bit of advice I'd love to, say, love to give you. So another bit of good advice that I hadn't been told but no, is just common sense really. When you start, first start brewing, you get yourself your own fermenter, which is a little plastic fermenter. I've got one here to show you. It has a little tap on the bottom. Now this is usually the first thing you start with. When you do extract brewing, partial mash brewing, all grain mash brewing, you end up pouring this brew or this wort into the fermenter. Make sure the tap's closed on your fermenter before you put your wort into the fermenter. As some of you have seen in some of my video, or one video especially, I forgot to do this and it's uh, quite messy. Mm. Oh. Anything else going to go wrong today? Okay. Uh, <laughs> the fourth item? Uh, is something that I only just discovered recently. Uh, water chemistry obviously is very important in brewing. Uh, don't get too hung up on the water chemistry of your beer. If you're not competing, if you're not going out and competing and you're making extract brewing or you're making this, uh, a simple brew, don't stress too much about the water chemistry. The biggest thing only that I could advise you is to get rid of your chlorine in your water from your tap water. That does definitely make a difference to the quality of your brew. The biggest bit of advice I was given by a subscriber was use candem tablets. Camp then, C-A-M-P-D-E-N, are brilliant. They basically neutralize your chlorine and your chloramine, which is put in your municipal tap water. I hope this helps. Use about half a tablet for your 20 liter batch or 23 liter batch, which is all you need. It doesn't affect the taste, but it does improve the taste. So. Uh, by all means, use Camden tablets if you're using tap water. That is a really good bit of advice. In home brewing, don't stress too much. If you're a home brewer and you use tap water and your municipal tap water is good to drink, it's good enough to brew with. One thing I have to stress to you guys is make sure your brew has stopped fermenting before bottling or kegging. I learnt that mistake when I first started brewing. I was in a bit of a hurry to get the beer done, so I put my beer into bottles thinking it was finished, tested it, gravity was right, gravity was at the a located level that the instruction said, so I left it at that, thought that'd be fine. Put in bottles, put my two pieces of carbonation drops in, left it, two weeks later, bottles started popping in my cupboard. Now I never filmed that, but it made an absolute mess and the room stinks still now. The beer was all over the floor, the carpet soaked it up, it was just quite bad. So don't do it. What you need to do though is 
when you measure your final gravity, when you feel think, think that it stopped fermenting, measure your final gravity, wait for 24 hours, measure it again. If the reading is the same, then you know for sure that your yeast stopped eating. If it's a different reading, wait for another 24 hours and keep checking until the, uh, until the measurements say the same thing. It's just my bit of advice to make sure you don't blow your bottles up. So guys, thank you very much for being part of this channel and uh, I appreciate you being there when I need you and the advice you give me is invaluable. Thank you very much. We'll see you soon.